All right, let's dive a bit deeper into how it all started. The day I met Tom wasn't anything special, at least it didn't start that way. Just me, trying to break free from the grind with a bike ride. Then, bang, my chain decides to call it quits right in the middle of nowhere. Picture this, me, stranded, with my bike flipped upside down, hands covered in grease, and not a clue on how to fix it. That's when Tom showed up. Looks like you could use a hand, he said, rolling up on his bike, a grin plastered on his face. He had that look of someone who's seen his fair share of bike troubles. I sighed. Yeah, this isn't exactly my forte. I was hoping to enjoy a peaceful ride, not a mechanics lesson. Tom chuckled as he dismounted. Well, life's got a funny way of throwing lessons at us. Let's see what we got here. He knelt beside the bike, his hands moving confidently over the parts. I couldn't help but notice how at ease he seemed, like this was just another day in the park for him. Chains come off, and you've got a bit of a mess here, Tom observed, glancing up at me. You ride often? Trying to, I replied, folding my arms. But it seems like my bike's got other plans. Here, hold this, he said, handing me a tool I couldn't name if my life depended on it. We worked together, or more accurately, he worked while I handed him tools, following his instructions. You're not from around here, are you? He asked, casually, as if we were discussing the weather. How'd you guess? I said, trying to sound lighthearted. I was new in town, having moved for the job. Didn't know many people, especially not helpful, bike repairing strangers. Just a hunch. I've got a good eye for new faces. Name's Tom. He introduced himself properly, finally getting the chain back on track. Naomi. I replied, offering a grimy hand, which he shook without hesitation. There, all done. She should ride smoothly now. Just try to avoid any more adventures today, Tom said, standing up and wiping his hands on his jeans. I couldn't help but laugh. I'll try, but no promises. Thanks a lot, Tom. I was pretty much stranded. Anytime, Naomi. If you ever need a riding partner or another lesson in bike mechanics, you know who to call, he said with a wink. His casual confidence was disarming. Not in a bad way, though. It felt like talking to an old friend, someone who just gets it. We parted ways, but not before exchanging numbers. There was something about Tom, a straightforwardness I appreciated. No airs, no pretending. Just him, his bike, and a willingness to help out a stranger. Little did I know, this chance meeting would turn into so much more. It was the beginning of everything, the good, the bad, and the utterly unexpected. After that unexpected yet serendipitous bike repair session, Tom and I started hanging out more. It wasn't long before we were inseparable, cycling around, exploring every nook and cranny of our little town. It felt like we were in our little world, pedaling towards something beautiful, something ours. Our dreams started weaving together, stitching a future we both yearned for. One lazy Sunday afternoon, sprawled on the couch after a particularly grueling ride, Tom broke the silence. You know, Naomi, I've been thinking. I turned to look at him, raising an eyebrow. Thinking? That sounds dangerous. He chuckled, that easy, infectious laugh of his filling the room. Yeah, well, hear me out. We've been doing this. He gestured vaguely around. This whole thing. It's great, but I've been thinking about what's next. I sat up, intrigued. What's next? Like, more biking trails? Or trying out those tandem bikes? I joked, but I could tell he was onto something bigger. No, not exactly. I mean, yes to more trails, but I was thinking more along the lines of, us. Our future. Maybe it's time we started thinking about settling down? You know, find a place that's ours, build a life together. His words hit me like a gentle wave, unexpected yet refreshing. Settling down, huh? I mused, letting the idea swirl around in my mind. I like the sound of that. But, we've got to think big, Tom. If we're doing this, I want us to dream big. A house, yes, but not just any house. 
Somewhere we can really call home, where we can maybe, start a family? Tom's eyes lit up, his hand finding mine, squeezing it gently. Exactly. I was hoping you'd say that. I've been looking at places, nothing concrete, just, daydreaming, I guess. There's this one spot, it's a bit out of the way, but the view, Naomi, it's like something out of a dream. We could have our morning coffee overlooking the valley, go on bike rides without seeing a soul. The excitement in his voice was contagious. I leaned in, imagining our future mornings, the mist over the valley, the sound of our laughter echoing as we chased each other on our bikes. Tom, that sounds perfect. But, it's gonna be a lot of work. We're gonna have to hustle like never before. Yeah, I know. But we've got this, Naomi. We make a pretty damn good team, if I say so myself. And hey, no one said our dreams would be handed to us. We'll work for it, every step of the way. The determination in his voice was all the confirmation I needed. We were in this together, ready to face whatever came our way. But, Tom, we've got to make sure we're on the same page here. No sugarcoating, no holding back. If we're doing this, it's gonna take everything we've got. Savings, late nights, maybe even cutting back on some of our adventures. Tom nodded, his expression serious. I get it, and you're right. It's not gonna be easy. But imagine, just imagine, Naomi, coming home to our place, our kids running around in the yard. It'll be worth it. I smiled, leaning my head on his shoulder. Yeah, it will be. And hey, when things get tough, we'll just remind each other of that view, of the mornings we're working towards. Deal? Deal. He agreed, wrapping an arm around me. We sat there in silence, not the uncomfortable kind, but the kind that spoke volumes. We were dreaming together, our hopes and fears laid bare, united by a common goal. The only thing that bothered me about living with Tom was his sister. Stepping into Lily's world is like walking into a never-ending party, where responsibility is the guest that never got invited. The first time I met her, she was sprawled on the couch, scrolling through her phone like it held the secrets of the universe. I'd just moved some of my stuff into the small house that Tom and I were calling home, and there she was, making herself very at home. Hey, you must be Naomi, the new sis-in-law, Lily said, without looking up from her phone. Her tone was casual, almost too casual, for someone who was meeting her brother's wife, for the first time. Yeah, that's me, I replied, trying to keep the peace. Nice to meet you, Lily. Um, was all she said, finally gracing me with a glance. It was clear from the get-go that Lily lived in a bubble, one where work was a mythical concept and money was just something you asked for. One evening, not long after that first meeting, I found myself sitting at the dinner table with Tom's family. It was a regular occurrence, these family dinners, but they always had a way of turning into a stage for the latest Lily drama. So, Lily, have you thought about what Dad offered? Tom asked, trying to sound as non-confrontational as possible. He was referring to the job offer at his dad's company, an assistant manager position that would have been a golden opportunity for anyone looking to get their foot in the door. Lily scoffed, a forkful of salad halfway to her mouth. Work for peanuts? No thanks. I'm waiting for something better. Her dad, a man of patience, but wearing thin, chimed in. Lily, you can't just wait around forever. It's time you start taking some responsibility. Oh, please, not this lecture again. Lily rolled her eyes, dropping her fork with a clatter. I don't see why I should settle for some dead-end job. The table went silent. Tom's mom, always the peacemaker, tried to change the subject, but the tension lingered like a bad taste. It wasn't just the job situation, though. Lily's financial escapades were legendary. One time, she racked up a bill so high at some fancy club, her mom had to sell a pair of jeweled earrings just to cover it. I can't believe you let it get that bad, Tom said to Lily one afternoon when the bill came to light. We were all in the living room, the air thick with disappointment and disbelief. Lily just shrugged. I didn't ask her to sell her earrings. She offered. That's not the point, Lily. Tom raised his voice, a rare occurrence. 
you're taking advantage of mom's kindness. And you're not? Lily shot back, her voice rising. You and Naomi living in that house, rent-free. Granddad left it to you, but it's still taking advantage. I could feel my cheeks heating up. This was different, and she knew it. We were saving up, working towards something more. Lily, on the other hand, was just burning through life with no thought for tomorrow. Living in that house isn't the same as blowing money on parties and expecting mom to bail you out, I finally said, unable to keep quiet. Lily looked at me, her eyes narrowing. Oh, so now you're part of this? Last I checked, you're not a part of this family by blood. There was silence after these words, and I realized that I was blushing even more. Lately, our little home started feeling less like a sanctuary and more like a public park. Ever since Lily discovered where the spare key was hidden, or more accurately, bullied Tom into telling her, our place became her go-to spot. Not for a chat and a cup of tea, mind you, but as her personal lounge, pantry, and, increasingly, her wardrobe. One particularly stressful Thursday, I came home from work, dead on my feet, dreaming of a hot shower and an evening curled up with Tom on the couch. Instead, I walked into what looked like the aftermath of a hurricane. Lily sprawled on the couch, TV blaring, surrounded by a mess of snack wrappers and several of my personal belongings scattered around her like she owned the place. I dropped my bag, the sound drowned out by the TV. My patience, already hanging by a thread, snapped. Lily, what the hell is this? She barely glanced at me, eyes glued to the screen. Chill, Naomi. Just killing some time. Your place is better than ours, you know that. I took a deep breath, counting to ten in my head, before I could trust myself to speak. It's not a public park, Lily. You can't just barge in and make a mess. Lily snorted, finally looking up at me. What's your problem? It's not like I'm bothering anyone. Tom doesn't mind. That did it. Tom doesn't mind because he hates confrontations, but I do. This is our home, not your personal hangout spot. And why are you wearing my sweater? She looked down at herself as if noticing, for the first time. This? I just found it lying around. Thought it was Tom's, or something. Right, because Tom really strikes me as the pastel sweater type. I shot back, the sarcasm heavy in my voice. Before I could launch into a tirade about respect and boundaries, the front door opened, and Tom walked in, looking as tired as I felt. His face lit up when he saw me, then fell just as quickly when he took in the scene before him. Hey, babe. What's, going on? He hesitated, eyes darting between me and his sister. Ask your sister why she thinks it's okay to treat our house like her personal dumpster, I said, frustration bleeding into my words. Tom sighed, running a hand through his hair. Lily, what have we talked about? Oh, come on, Tom. I'm just relaxing. Naomi's making a big deal out of nothing. Lily protested, finally turning the TV off and standing up, making no move to clean her mess. Tom looked at me, then at his sister, a silent battle of wills, playing out. Lily, you gotta respect our space. And Naomi's stuff. It's not cool to just take things without asking. Lily rolled her eyes, muttering something under her breath before grabbing her bag. Fine, I'm out. Didn't realize this place was a freaking museum. As she stormed out, Tom and I were left standing in the silence of her wake, the tension thick. He moved to hug me, but I stepped back, my emotions a tangled mess. Tom, we need to talk. This can't keep happening. It's not just about your sister using our place like a hotel. It's about respect, and right now, I'm feeling a total lack of it. Tom's face fell, and he nodded, understanding the seriousness of the situation. You're right. I'll talk to her, Naomi. I promise. We'll set some boundaries. I don't want you feeling like this in our own home. The rest of the evening was spent in quiet contemplation, both of us knowing that a conversation with Lily was just a temporary fix. The real challenge was ensuring she understood the meaning of boundaries and respect. 
That fateful day I caught Lily red-handed, rifling through my personal belongings, marked a turning point. There she was, in my bedroom, drawers open, my stuff scattered all around her. My jaw dropped. What in the world do you think you're doing? I demanded, my voice echoing off the walls. Lily, nonchalant, barely glanced up. Just borrowing a few things. No big deal. She shrugged, as if she was doing nothing out of the ordinary. No big deal? Lily, that's my stuff. You can't just take whatever you want without asking. I shot back, feeling a mix of anger and disbelief. She smirked, looking up with a defiance that took me aback. Come on, don't be so tight. It's not like you don't have plenty to spare. She retorted, her tone dripping with entitlement. I couldn't believe her audacity. It's not about having plenty, Lily. It's about respect, something you clearly know nothing about. I replied, my voice rising. She rolled her eyes, stuffing a scarf of mine into her bag, and shot back. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. Chill out. The confrontation escalated quickly, and before I knew it, Lily had stormed out, muttering insults under her breath. The aftermath left me shaken, but little did I know, it was just the beginning. The next day, Lily's mom showed up at our door, furious. Without so much as a greeting, she launched into a tirade. How dare you accuse my daughter of stealing? You should be ashamed, hoarding all these things, while she has so little. I was taken aback. It's not about the things. It's about the principle. She can't just barge in and take what she wants. I tried to explain, but it fell on deaf ears. She's family, and family shares. You're just being greedy. She accused, her words stinging like salt in a wound. The situation worsened from there. My belongings continued to disappear, only to show up on social media, proudly displayed by Lily as if she'd acquired them through honest means. My frustration grew each day, culminating in the night she decided to bring her drunken party to our doorstep. The noise was unbearable, a cacophony of laughter and shouting that pierced the quiet of our home. Tom, usually the calm one, reached his breaking point. He stormed into the living room, confronting Lily and her rowdy friends. This is our home, not a bar. You need to leave. Now. He bellowed, the anger in his voice unmistakable. Lily, unfazed and clearly inebriated, laughed in his face. Oh, come on. We're just having a little fun. Don't be such a killjoy. She slurred, her friends echoing her laughter. Tom's face was a mask of fury. I'm not joking, Lily. Get out, or I'm calling the police. He threatened, his stance firm and unwavering. The laughter died down as the reality of the situation set in. With grumbles and complaints, Lily and her entourage finally vacated our home, leaving a trail of chaos in their wake. The lull lasted a couple of months, and then things took a nosedive into the bazaar. Dad, who's been a cop for as long as I can remember, decided to crash with us for a bit. That day, Lily, the family's personal whirlwind of chaos, showed up unannounced, claiming some urgent need to just grab a few things from upstairs. She darted through the house with a purpose, then vanished as quickly as she had appeared. Fast forward to the evening, and Dad's casual scrolling through his phone turned frantic. Alert after alert popped up his bank account was hemorrhaging money at an alarming rate. The realization hit him like a ton of bricks, his bank card was nowhere to be found. He was on the phone with the bank faster than you can say fraud, demanding they block his card immediately. No sooner had he hung up than my phone rang. It was Lily, sounding more sloshed than ever. Hey, why'd you block the card? You're screwing up my night. How am I supposed to pay for my drinks? I was floored. Lily, are you out of your mind? You stole my dad's card, not mine. He's a cop, for crying out loud. Her response was a mix of disbelief and mockery, slurred but clear. Oh, come on. Stop playing games. You're just trying to get me in trouble. By this time, Dad and Tom were both hovering over me, their faces a mix of anger and incredulity. Dad, always the calm one in a crisis, took the phone from me with a demeanor that could freeze fire. 
Lily, this is John. You've got exactly one chance to make this right. Return the card and the money, or I promise you, you'll be facing more than just a hangover tomorrow. Her laughter echoed down the phone line, a clear sign she wasn't taking any of this seriously. You guys are hilarious, really. Good night. With that, she hung up. Dad's face was set in stone as he dialed his colleagues at the station, briefing them on the situation with a precision and calmness that belied the storm brewing inside him. Tom paced the room, I sat, dumbfounded by the audacity of Lily's actions and the sheer gall she had to laugh it off. After the debacle with the stolen card, things escalated quickly. We found ourselves at the police station, a place I never imagined we'd be under such circumstances. My dad, still in his work mode, was all business, but I could see the disappointment etched deep in his face. Tom was beside me, a mix of anger and disbelief in his eyes. And there, looking like a deer caught in headlights, was Lily, cuffed and sobbing. Please, I didn't mean for any of this to happen. Lily whimpered, her tough facade crumbled into a heap of regret. I just, I just wanted some fun. Dad, usually the calm one, had his patience worn thin. Fun? Is that what you call stealing? Putting your entire family through this, mess? Lily's mom, my mother-in-law, was next to her, tears streaming down her face, but with a fire in her eyes. This is all just a big misunderstanding. My Lily wouldn't hurt a fly. You have to believe us. I was fuming, struggling to keep my composure, Misunderstanding? She stole from us, from her own family. How do you just brush that off? The room was charged with tension, each of us standing on a precipice of raw emotions. My father-in-law, a stern man who'd been silent up until now, finally spoke. Enough, he said, his voice commanding the room's attention. This ends now. Lily, you'll return what you took, and we'll sort out the mess you've made. My mother-in-law exploded, you can't be serious. They're treating her like a criminal over some family misunderstanding. That's because she is one, Tom finally said, his tone colder than I'd ever heard. She broke the law. Being family doesn't give her a free pass to do whatever she pleases. The discussion went back and forth, with my father-in-law eventually stating that if Lily and her mother couldn't abide by the rules of decency and law, they'd have to find somewhere else to live. It was a bombshell that left everyone reeling. My mother-in-law was hysterical, Lily was a mix of tears and defiance, and there I stood, watching as the family I married into seemed to fracture before my eyes. After everything that went down, my father-in-law did right by us. He paid back every penny that Lily had blown through using Dad's card. Dad didn't push for charges against her. But that didn't mean things went back to how they were. Lily and her mom packed up and left, started a new chapter, you could say, in some cramped apartment, living off what little the pension coughed up. Lily? She hasn't changed much, still jobless, still flaunting her so-called life on social media like it's something to be proud of. Tom and I, we had a sit down about all this mess, once the dust settled. Can you believe this? After all the drama, she's still at it. I said, scrolling through Lily's latest adventures online, a mix of disbelief and irritation churning in my gut. Tom, ever the rock, just shook his head. Let her be, babe. We did what we could. It's on her now. Besides, Tom added, we've got bigger and better things to plan. Like that big house you'd keep dreaming about. The determination in his voice was contagious. Absolutely. We focus on us, our dreams, the big house, maybe even start talking about kids. Kids, huh? Tom's eyes lit up at the mention. I think we're gonna make great parents. But let's promise to never let our kids turn into mini lilies. We laughed together, the sound a healing balm to the wounds of the past weeks. Deal. No mini tyrants allowed. I agreed. The next few days were a testament to our resolve. We cleaned, we planned, we dreamed. Our conversations were peppered with ideas for the future, interspersed with moments of reflection on what we'd gone through. I was thinking, I said one evening as we sat with cups of tea, maybe we should start a new tradition, 
something that's just ours, to mark the end of one chapter and the beginning of another. Tom nodded, thoughtful. I like that. What did you have in mind? Maybe a bike ride every month. Just the two of us, exploring new places, making new memories. He grinned, squeezing my hand. I love it. It's how we started, after all. It's perfect. As for Lily and her mom, life had taken them on a different path. They faced their own challenges, grappling with the consequences of their actions. From afar, I hoped they'd find their way, learn from their mistakes, and maybe, just maybe, find their own new beginning.